Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're good? Yeah, we're good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, guys. Hello, hello. Come on in, guys. Seven minutes late. Yeah, we are a little late, but we are fixing things up. Please begin to come in right now. In the name of Jesus. Come in, family. Come in, come in, come in. God bless you. Come in, come in. We are late, but surely we are starting right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in, guys. God is good. God is good. God is good. This is frontline time. This is the time that we go into the battle zone to claim back what belongs to us. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. His mercy endures forever. Come on in, family. Come on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come in, guys. Come in. That's why I'm so sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, in family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in, family. Come on in. Hallelujah. Come on in. Hello, hello, hello. Fill the room, people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Riva ba shende kere ba sata karabo shende kete kete kete. Yende re ba sanda rabo shete kere ba sata karabo shende kere ba sata karabo. Come on in. 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 Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to our front line. Come on in, come on in. The Bible says enter his gate, keep his gate with thanksgiving in your heart. Come on, enter, enter. Say a word of thanksgiving to your God. We are entering the place of front line. We enter with a song of thanksgiving to our God. We enter saying thank you, God, because you are the one who fight our battle. Enter, enter with thanksgiving. Switch your heart. Position your heart with thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Thanksgiving is your weapon today. Thanksgiving is your weapon today. Come on in. Come on in. Don't forget to share. Enter. Enter. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We give you praise, Lord. We give you. Enter. Enter. I'm entering in that place of gratitude, of contentment, of thanksgiving, regardless of what's happening in my life. I'm entering as a soldier of the Lord in worship and adoration, thanking him for his salvation, for his salvation in your life, for his protection in your life, for his covering in your life. Enter with thanksgiving. Is there somebody who's thankful today? It's a hard position. It's a hard matter. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for the servants of God, for the intercessors, for the warriors, for those who love the Lord. Thanksgiving is our weapon as we enter into the presence of front line to bring forth the will of God upon this earth. Today, God is about to shift. He's about to position everything in your home, in your family, in your relationship, in your workplace. God is about to bring a shift, a shift that comes with thanksgiving. Today, I give you 
hand come on in come on in we say thank you lord this is your weapon today it's a weapon of gratitude the devil can fight somebody who's grateful the devil can come against somebody who's grateful today gratitude is your weapon gratitude is your weapon enter 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 position your heart position your spirit position your mind position yourself with gratitude in your spirit today this is your weapon your weapon of gratitude said thank you jesus i'm entering with a grateful heart this morning this evening come on in don't forget to share and start praying in the spirit say god i thank you regardless of what's going on around me i thank you because you are my god I thank you because you're the one who fight for me. I thank you because you are the one who stand for me. A heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving. Today, the soldiers of the Lord come in ready to thank God because he is the one who give us victory in all things. He give us victory in all things. Yes, gratitude is your weapon. Gratitude is your weapon today. Thanksgiving is your weapon tonight. Father God, we give you praise. We give you praise, we give you praise. I might not have everything that I need, but what I have, I know it comes from you. You might not have answered all the prayers from now, but I know you have answered already so many prayers. I thank you, God. Gratitude is my weapon today. Thankfulness is my weapon today. My mouth shall praise you for what you have done for me, what you are about to do, and what you're gonna do in my life, in my family, in my nation, and my country, in the nation of the earth. Yes, gratitude is your weapon. Thanksgiving is your weapon. We give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. Hey! I hear the Spirit of God says that he's been good to somebody today. Somebody need to remember how God has been good to them. Somebody need to remember how God has been good to them. So you can be grateful. Grateful for the things they have already accomplished. Somebody wants, God wants to hear. He has been good to you. Regardless what you not see, he has been good to you. He has provided for you. He has protected you. He has covered you. He has kept your job. He has kept you in, in times of war. He has kept you from accident. He has kept you from divorce. God is saying to somebody, I need you to remember that I've been good to you. I need you to know that I've been good to you in everything that I do. My goodness has been always with you. Be grateful today. Be grateful. Today is our enemy. As we enter, we enter with our heart position. With our heart position. With our heart position. We enter with humility. We enter knowing that everything that we have, it is because God has been good to us. Everything that we have, it is God who has given it to us. Today God says, I want gratitude in the hearts of my people. I want gratitude in the hearts of my servants. I want gratitude in the heart of my frontliners. Be good. He's been good to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hey, even in this season, we give him praise. We give him praise. You might be confined in your house, but still give him praise. You might be without a job, but still give him praise. You might have lost somebody, but still give him praise. You might be done, but still give him praise. You might be discouraged, but still give him praise. God says you need to establish an altar of gratitude in your home, an altar of gratitude in your heart, an altar of gratitude, whatever you are today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's been so good, he's been so good. He's been so faithful. Hey, you're still alive, you're still breathing. You still have something to eat. He's been faithful to you. He's been faithful to you. He's been faithful to somebody smiting. He has been faithful. Father of truth, all the author and finisher of your faith, he has been so good, he has been faithful, there is no one that can be compared to our God, our God is everything, he is the one that sees your heart, he is the one that knows that cry, 
He is the one that knows the tears. Give him praise tonight. Our God is good. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. He will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. Tonight we are grateful, Father. We bless your mighty holy name tonight. We are in your presence, oh God. For your presence is fullness of joy. At your, at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Father, we worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Your word says we should not be anxious for anything. But with thanksgiving, we should make our request known unto God. Yes, we are ready to get into prayer. But thanksgiving, people of God, is about everything. Tonight we say our God is faithful. Tonight we say he is good. Tonight we say his mercy endures forever. We cannot do without him. He is your life. He is the bread that you take. He is the one that sees your heart. He sees the cry that you cry each and every day. And he is saying, my son, my daughter, do not fear. He is the one that assures you every single day, 365, do not be afraid. The love of God is so overwhelming. People of God, appreciate him for his love. He is a good father. He is a good God. There is no one in your life that you can compare with your God. You can search from eternity to eternity, but no one can treat you better than your God. Your God, who told you in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. Our God is so good. He is so good. And tonight, Father, we bless your name. We honor you. Father of justice, we honor you tonight. Father true and just, the Father of spirits, maker of heaven and earth, the everlasting Father, we bless your name tonight. We are full of gratitude tonight for all that you have given us. Oh, we bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is somebody being grateful today? God wants to remind you out of Lamentation 3, 22 to 25. Lamentation 3, 22 to 25. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. Today God is giving us key weapon to fight the enemy today. To enter into the battleground. To be the frontliners. God says, hey, remember, it is with my love that I have fought at the cross. It is with my love I have fought at the cross. And my love overcame. My love triumphed because of my love I had for you. Today, God to remind you that his mercies never end. They never cease. They will never cease. Regardless of what you have done, wrong or good, bad or gladly, regardless of who you have killed or destroyed with your tongue, God says his mercies never end. Today, if you are here, you are dealing with culpability. God is saying the mercies are new every morning. He never, he forgets everything you've done once you ask him to forgive for, for his forgiveness. He says his mercies are new every morning. Today we break every yoke of guilt, every yoke of condemnation, every yoke of discouragement upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus. God says his mercies are new every morning. Mercies are new to cover your faults. Mercies are new to cover your lack. Mercies are new to cover your, your shortcoming. His mercies are new every morning in your life. And he says, great is that faithfulness. When we enter tonight, we are entering with a weapon of God's faithfulness. When we enter and we pray, we know we are standing on the faithfulness of God. His faithfulness stands forever and forever. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. When you go to war, you go in with a battle cry, saying, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness in your life and in my life. Hallelujah. And he goes, I said to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. 
Hallelujah. Today I want to remind somebody, yes. you might not have a bank account yes. that is full. Yes. You might not have a job today. Hallelujah. God wants yes. to remind you. He is your portion. Yes. He is your inheritance. Yes. In whatever situation, yes. in whatever lack, yes. God is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Do not give up. Yes. Do not be afraid. Yes. Do not be shaken Hallelujah. by your bank being empty. Yes. God say he is your inheritance. Yes. And he's your portion forever. Give him praise today. Give him praise today. Give him praise today. Great is your faithfulness. The weapon I offer today is gratitude, his faithfulness. We know his mercy on you every morning. We are entering knowing that this God loves you. This God loves me, that he has forgiven you. He has forgiven me, that I can stand confident in the presence of my enemies and take back what the enemy has stolen from me because of the covenant my God has made with me. I can stand knowing that the blood of the Lamb is speaking against what the enemy has done in my life. Great is his faithfulness. The weapon of our warfare today is faithfulness, is gratitude, is praise, is the mercy of God, is the grace of God, is the compassion of God, is the love of God, is his inheritance that he has set aside for his children, the saints of God. Great is that faithfulness. We can depend on him. We can depend on the faithfulness of God. People of God, uh, the word of God in Psalm 55 verse 22 mm. said, cast all your burdens upon the Lord for he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be forsaken. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Cast all your cares on him tonight for he cared for you. He cared for you. He cares. He cares about you. He cares about you. His love is everlasting. His love is forevermore. He has given you the spirit of love. He clothed you with the spirit of love. The spirit of power and the spirit of a sound mind. You are wearing that garment of the love of God. And his love will cast away every fear. And that is why he told us never to be afraid. Because he has clothed us with his love. And that love should cast away every fear that you have in your heart. Tonight, I just want you to rest in the love of God as we even enter into the zone of the enemy to take back that which belongs to us. I want you to have this in mind that the love of God is sustaining tonight, that the love of God can keep you. The love of God will not allow you to fall. I don't know what the enemy has been telling you, but tonight I want you to remember that you have a God that never fails. Yes. whose love will always be there for you to clothe you like a garment. Tonight, I want you to enter into rest as we enter into our prayer zone tonight. I want you to I want to connect with your spirit tonight Connect with your spirit tonight People of God I want you to release your faith tonight Cast away every doubt tonight As we get into that zone of prayer Let no doubt be in your head Let no doubt But let faith arise in you let yes, faith yes, arise yes, in you yes, right yes. now as we enter into that zone of the enemy to take back that which belongs to us. Remember the word of God says that God will not hear you when you weaver, when you weaver in your heart. And so tonight, the word of God says in John 6, 24, he said, up until now, you have not asked anything. So he's saying, ask that your joy will be full. Ask that you may receive tonight. As we enter into that zone of prayer tonight, he is reassuring you. In John 14, 14, he said, ask anything in my name and I will do it for you. So I want you to rely on the faithfulness of God that he says, ask 
Up until now, you have not asked. But I want you tonight to ask so that I will do it for you, that your joy will be full. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to begin to plead the blood of Jesus right now as we enter into the zone of the enemy right now as we enter into the zone of the spirit i want you to release your faith i want you to connect with your spirit to the spirit of god let there be a spirit to spirit connection let there be no doubt in your spirit that you may receive that for which you ask of the lord tonight Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that was shed. The blood that speaks, that blood that has a voice that is shed upon the mercy seat. That when you bring your request, that God is looking at your request through the blood that was shed for you through the blood that declares you not guilty. Tonight, I want you to know that you are not guilty of anything that the enemy is bringing your way tonight because of the blood of Jesus that is sitting upon the mercy seat. He is the great high priest and he is interceding for us. He is interceding before the Father tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus tonight. We thank you, Lord, as we enter into the zone of the enemy tonight. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood upon everyone that is in this platform tonight. I plead the blood over you tonight. I plead the blood over your jurisdiction tonight. That no weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. That there shall be no hijacking of this prayer tonight. The Lord, this prayer will come as a sweet smelling savour unto the Most High God. And according to his word in John 14, 14, to ask anything in his name because he will do it for us. Father, we give you praise tonight. Oh, we give you praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want us to enter into prayer right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Release your faith tonight, people of God. I want us to enter into prayer right now. And the first prayer that we want to carry out tonight... Many people are losing their minds in this difficult time. A lot of people are losing their mind. There could be fear and anxiety, but then the enemy can sow an evil seed and that seed will bring anxiety. And so tonight we are going to pray that your mind will be stayed on God. The word of God says he will keep in perfect peace those whose hearts are stayed on him. So tonight we're going to pray a prayer. And in that prayer we're going to say, God, give me a heart, a mind that is stayed on you. I don't want to lose my mind. A lot of people are losing their mind. Tonight we are going to ask God for a sound mind. A mind that is stayed on God. Before we get into prayer tonight, I just want to, I just want to comment on a, a couple of things. I just want to comment on a couple of things. You know, the mind is a constant battleground of the enemy. And that is because the mind is a gateway, okay, between your body and your spirit. Your mind is in your soulish realm. And that is that realm where your will, your emotions, and your intellect, that is where they are. And it is that place where you feel, you think, and you want. So when the enemy wants to corrupt a man's mind, he begins to ask evil questions into your mind, into your thoughts. Remember that question that the enemy asked Eve in the Garden of, in the garden of Eden, in, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, where he said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. 
which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, yes, had the Lord said, that is how the enemy comes to corrupt your mind by asking you stupid, evil questions. Okay? So watch out for those thoughts that begin to question your obedience to the word of God. The Bible said to cast down every such imagination. And so tonight as we enter to pray for a sound mind, I just want us to begin to ask for repentance. I want us to ask for repentance. You see, a corrupt mind starts with a simple thought. And that is because you have not guided your heart. Okay? The Bible said guard your heart because that is where the issues of life flow from. The word of God also says in Proverbs 23, 7, it said, as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So when you sow a thought, you reap an act. People of God, listen to this. When you sow a thought, you reap an act. If you continue to sow that act, you reap a habit. And when you continue to sow that habit, you reap a character. And when you continue to sow that character, you reap a destiny. And it could be good or bad. But tonight we are talking about minds that have been corrupted by the enemy. So in order to renew your mind tonight, we're going to ask God for repentance. That is the first prayer we're going to pray tonight. The word of God says in Isaiah, I want somebody to type it in the feed there. Isaiah 55, 7. Isaiah 55, 7. The word of God said, Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he, is, he will abundantly pardon. Amen. And also, Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now and let's reason together. Said the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be wool. Let's begin to ask God for forgiveness now. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So let's begin to ask God right now for repentance. Let's go to him in repentance. Say, Father, I am sorry. I have not guarded my heart. I have not guarded my heart. I have left my heart and the enemy has sown seeds that are evil, which I have repeated and I have sowed an evil mind. And right now, your mind is failing you. Your mind is corrupted. Ask the Lord for forgiveness tonight. I want you to begin to pray in tongues right now. I want you to begin to pray in tongues Today, I want you to put your hands on, on your head today. We're going to uproot every seed of evil on our mind. We're going to uproot every attack of the enemy of our mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, yeah, Baba Sataka. Today I want you to declare you have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Every seed of destruction is being uprooted today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every seed of destruction, every seed of destruction is being uprooted from somebody's mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Every seed of hopelessness is being uprooted from your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Every lie of the enemy over your thoughts is uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, come on, pray, 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 pray. We uproot every seed that brings destruction in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Our mind is fruitful. Our mind is fruitful with the word of God. Come on, come on, come on. Let your mind be, be free, be free from every thinking pattern that is negative. The Lord come, come from the Lord. Today we are free. We are free. We are free from wrong thinking. 
thinking. We are free from wrong thinking. Today we are free from every habit that is not from the Lord. Come on, put your hands. Put your hands on your mind. Put your hands on my mind. Today, with the purpose, the seed of the word of God in our mind. Today, we choose to think the thoughts of God in the mighty name of Jesus. My mind is free today. Your mind is free today. Your mind is pure today. Your thinking is pure today. My thinking is pure today. Depression has no place in my mind. Hopelessness has no place in my mind. Sin has no place in my mind. My mind is free. My mind is free. Come on, come on, come on. Uproot, uproot, uproot. Uproot, uproot, uproot. Uproot, uproot. Today I decree and declare today that you have the sound mind. You have a mind of the Lord. You walk according to the ways of God. Today, the seed of the word of God is being planted in you. The seed that brings fruit. The fruit that remains. The fruit of the word of God. Today, there's stability in your mind. Today, there's understanding in your mind. Today, there is light in your mind. Today, there's peace in your mind. Today, there is joy in your mind. Today, you see clear. You see clear the way God is seeing today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want, you to, I want us to consider the word of God in Hebrews 12. I want somebody to type that into the feed right now. Hebrew 12, 1 to 3. We want to look to Jesus. You see, Jesus couldn't lose his mind of everything that he went through on the cross of Calvary. The word of God says in Hebrew 12, 1 to 3. He said, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes people of god fixing our eyes on jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart, people of God. Let's begin to pray right now to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. To fix our eyes on Jesus. I don't know what your circumstance is today, but I want you to look beyond that circumstance and see Jesus Christ endure like he did because he endured the cross. Because of you and I, the joy that was set before yes, him. God. Begin to set your eyes on the Lord right now. Begin to pray that, Lord, I set my eyes on you. I set my eyes on you, Lord. I fix my eyes on you, Lord. I fix my gazes on you, Lord. The faces of those that look to you, God, they are radiant, oh God. Their faces are never covered with shame. I want you to begin to pray that prayer right now. The Lord, I fix my eyes on you. My eyes are on you today. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I fix my eyes on you, Jesus. I fix my eyes on you. I fix my eyes on you. My eyes are on you today, God. My eyes are on you. I look beyond my circumstance. I look, look beyond my situation. And I put my eyes on you. Lord, I magnify you in my situation. I see beyond it. Because you said things will work together for my good. I choose to look to you tonight, Jesus. My eyes are on you. Yende kere basakakata. Rika babo shete kete kete. Yende kete kete. Rika babo sa. Yende kere basandakata. Yende kete kete kete. Ribo koso toro bo shete kere basatakata. Yende kete kete kete. Yende kere basaya. Yende kere basatakata. Lord, my eyes are on you. I fix them on you. Only on you, God. Because you are my strength. Because in you I find refuge. You are my stronghold. You are my refuge. Some trust in their horses and in their, in, in their chariots. But I look to you, God. I look to you for victory tonight, oh God. In the name of the Lord 
Jesus Christ. I want you to pray that prayer tonight. The Lord, I fix my gaze on you. My gaze are on you, God. My gaze are on you, God. Yende kereba sata kata. Ribo kosoto robo shende kereba sata kata kata. I gaze are on you, God. I gaze to you tonight, oh God. I gaze to you tonight, oh God. Because you are my refuge. You are my stronghold. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want somebody to type into that feed. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, 33. As we fix our eyes on Jesus, we want him to put... You see, your mind can be corrupted when you have the wrong thoughts there. So we're going to ask the Lord, God, hide your word in my heart so that I do not sin against you. Like the word of God says in Jeremiah 33, 31 verse 33. He said, he said, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. That after those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their innermost parts and write it in their hearts and it will, and I will be their God and they will be my people. So I want us to pray this segment of prayer that says, God, please write your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. And that is the only time, uh, that is the, the only word, time God. that we can do the word of God in Romans 12, 1 to 2, which says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. It's only when the word of God is in you that you can present your body a living sacrifice. So every day you present your body, you present your body, and you are not going to lose your mind again. So I want us to begin to pray that prayer. As we close this segment of prayer, say, God, write your word in my heart that I may not sin before you. And let me take up my cross and carry you every day. As I look to you, as I repent and I look to you and I read your word, I concentrate on your word that I may not lose my mind. People of God, you need your mind to enter into the next level that God has for you. You should not be losing your mind at this time of of your destiny. Let's pray tonight. The Lord, write your word in my heart. I do not want to lose my mind. I want you to write your word in my heart that I may not sin against you tonight. Father, we thank you tonight Thank you for your word yes. that you are establishing yes. in the heart of your people. Yes. Father, tonight we look to you, God, that yes. we present our bodies a living sacrifice to you. Yes. Father, help us, oh God, to carry our cross every day yes. and to follow you, to looking up to Jesus, yes. the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. I prophesy to you tonight. Yes. That the Lord has not given you that spirit of fear, but he has given you the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind. I prophesy sound mind to you tonight. I prophesy sound mind to you. I prophesy an excellent spirit to you that in everything that you will do, going forward, that you will operate in excellent spirit, in the spirit of excellency, in the mighty name of Jesus. A sound mind, a mind of excellence, a mind that is after God, a mind that is sound, a mind that does what the Spirit of God says. Father, we thank you for a sound mind tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to get into the next prayer segment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still I feel I feel this in my spirit. This is for some of you. I keep feeling God is saying to us, gratitude, gratitude is your weapon of victory today. Some of you, your mind is downcasted. Your mind doesn't see far because you have not cultivated gratitude and, and thankfulness in your heart and thanksgiving in your mind. God is saying the door to your breakthrough is through thanksgiving, it's through gratitude. The door through your mind being set free is through perspective, Seek, fixing your eyes, seeing what he has done for you already. God wants you to be grateful for where you are and where you've been before you can answer to what he wants you to do. Today, some of you need to shift your mind, shift your thinking, shift your heart into a place of gratitude and thankfulness. Then you'll be free from the mindset, the demonic and from the enemy. Then you'll be free. God say in everything, give thanks to God because it is the will of God for you. Today you might be wondering, God, I want this. But God say, be thankful to me because that's what I want you to do today. The wall of Jericho came down because God gave an order to the children of Israel. He said, walk around seven times without saying nothing. God is saying, your walls will come down, but not, be, not be saying nothing, but being grateful, thanking him for what he has done, thanking him for the little thing you think he's done for you, thanking him for the big stuff he has done before you can even enter into your promised land. Today, God is saying, praise and thanksgiving for you is your weapon so that you can enter to that place of wholeness in your mind, that place of freedom, in your mind, the press of liberty in your mind. God wants you to enter the next level that he has for you with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart of gratitude. This is your weapon today. In this life, we are always trying to reach for more, more, more. God is saying, today I want you to pause. Your weapon is your praise. Your weapon is your gratitude. Your weapon is your thanksgiving. So enter, turn around your Jericho's wall today with a heart of thanksgiving praise the name of the Lord with gratitude in your heart establish a praise in your life establish a praise in your heart establish a praise in your spirit then you will be free free from the lies of the enemy free from the lies of the enemy enter with praise and thanksgiving today because he's about to give you what you've never asked what you never thought before but he wants you to be positioned with a heart of gratitude with a heart of thanksgiving for what he has done already in your life come on thank him today thank you jesus hallelujah thanksgiving and gratitude people of god that is your weapon that is your weapon to a sound mind that is your weapon to receiving from the lord tonight amen hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus i want us to enter into the next segment of prayer right now you see in this time people are full of expectations you're expecting one miracle or the other from yes. god you're expecting that god will meet one need or the other in your life it could be that you're going through an oppression right now or a depression and you're crying out to God and say, God, when is this miracle going to come? What, when will I receive deliverance? Amen. When will my breakthrough come? You lost your job. You're thinking, God, my job. When will I get a new job? When will my business take off again after this lockdown? Yes. I don't know what your expectations are. It could be your health that is even failing. And you have been praying. You've been going to the doctors. And you're not receiving any healing. Tonight, I don't know where your miracle is going to come from. But your expectations tonight, I want you to channel that expectation to God. Who said that surely there is an end. 
but the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. I want you to be in that mindset tonight as we make the next prayer. The next prayer. The next prayer. I want you to know that God will meet you at the very point of your need. So I don't know what that mountain is. That mountain. Is it your health, your family, your children? Whatever it is tonight. I want you to focus on that point. And I want you to consider this word of God. Because God will only answer to his word tonight. And that is why I desire that you type in this, these verses into the feed. So that you can go back and re-watch them. And read the word that specifies what you demand. God only answers to his word. Hallelujah. John 14, 14 says, Ask anything in my name and I will do it for you. Yes, Lord. Zechariah 4, 7 says, What are you, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. Not by power, not by my, but by my spirit. So I don't know what your mountain is tonight. Job 22, 28. Please type it into the feed. It says that you should decree a thing tonight and it shall be established for you. Remember, you are a priest and you are a king. And so you have authority tonight. And I want you to exercise that authority. Yes, Knowing the word of God in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God is thinking good of you. He said, thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. So God is not just asking you to ask. He already made provision for you. But I want you to release your faith tonight. Release your faith. Because in Matthew 6, 22, he said, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap, nor gather into barn. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not better than they? What, why, I, why is your prayer not answered tonight? Why is your prayer not? What is that mountain tonight? We are going to pray tonight. Psalm 34 10 says, mm -hmm. The young lion, they do lack and yes. suffer hunger. But, but he said, Those that seek the Lord, yes, they shall not lack any good thing. Anything. And Obadiah 1 17, it says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Yes, People of God, you have all the evidence that you require to mind. To release your faith without any doubt that God will answer whatever that miracle is tonight. So I want you to begin to pray. Begin to call out what that, what that expectation is. Even for people that desire a life partner. Do you need a wife or a husband? Is it for people that are pregnant? That your pregnancy is threatening abortion. What is it that tonight? Is it your immigration paper? I want you to pray tonight. And I want you to believe God for a miracle. Because he is faithful. And he is able to do that to you. May the Lord meet you at the point of your need tonight. Begin to pray tonight. Begin to release your faith. Begin to know that God is able. What he says he will do, he will do. Tonight he will not disappoint. The faces of those that look to him are radiant. The faces are never covered in shame. Begin to ask, begin to cry out for the Lord. Because he will hear your cry tonight. Begin to pray that prayer tonight. May the Lord meet me at the point of my need tonight. Let your miracle appear by fire tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let every embargo that the enemy has placed on your miracle, let it be lifted tonight. Let every embargo be broken tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let every evil arrow be, that is targeted against your miracle tonight, let it be destroyed tonight. In the name of Jesus, let every evil padlock that the enemy has used to catch your miracle, let it be broken tonight. In the name of Jesus, let every negative prophecy, I don't care whether it's coming from your, your bloodline, 
I don't care where he's coming from, the last generation to the tenth generation. Tonight, that evil prophecy is cancelled in the name of Jesus. Begin to profess that and break every evil covenant that is holding you back tonight. In the name of Jesus, we break it tonight. We cancel it tonight. We decree it null and void and to no effect. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy to receive your miracle tonight. I receive my miracle tonight. I receive my healing tonight. I receive my healing tonight. I receive my deliverance tonight. In the name of Jesus, receive your breakthrough. I see the hand of God divinely intervening in your situation tonight. Begin to call forth those things that be not as though they were tonight. Begin to pray forth in the name of Jesus. Receive fresh oil. Receive a fresh oil of favor upon your life to change your story tonight. To glory tonight. Let the light of God shine upon you tonight and release that miracle for you tonight. Receive your healing tonight. Receive your deliverance tonight. Receive your husband tonight. Receive your wife tonight. Receive your baby tonight. Receive your job tonight. Whatever your miracle is tonight, receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, somebody celebrate for this breakthrough. Somebody put his hand together. Celebrate God for the confession of his word that kept you from sinning, that released you in this breakthrough. Hey, come on, celebrate him for breakthroughs. Celebrate him for your liberation. Celebrate him for your emancipation. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate it. Come on, somebody give him thanks, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I would like to bring a short teaching. Let with prayers. Amen. God bless you, Hallelujah. Sister Smarty, my daughter. Hallelujah. Powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Woman of the world. Somebody's being blessed. Hallelujah. I say somebody's being blessed. Amen. Come on, somebody's being blessed. Somebody's being blessed. Hallelujah. Somebody's being blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's being blessed. Hallelujah. You know, as we're praying, this word come to me. In Genesis 51, 52, is speaking of the names that Joseph gave to his children. Mm. And the word Ephraim mm. come to me. Yes. And it says like this, God make him fruitful in the land of his affliction. Amen. God made him fruitful in the land of his affliction. I don't know what I'm talking to. Hallelujah. I don't know how the environment around you, it is so difficult. You feel afflicted on every corner. Yes. Fruitfulness is still possible. Amen. Fruitfulness is still possible. Amen. Receive that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the Ephraim anointing come upon you. Amen. Regardless how hard the ground has been, Amen. you will be fruitful Amen. in the land of affliction. Amen. Regardless how tough the condition has been, Amen. fruitfulness is your portion Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'd like to share quickly here, preparing you for the service of Sunday. Mm. Very dangerous and very important for your welfare and for the progress of your family. Amen. Allow me just to share with you, reading from Micah chapter 4, verse 13. Micah chapter 4, verse 13. This is especially for, for everybody, but especially for women. Mm. Uh, if you're a woman watching tonight, I want you to give a double attention, Amen. though it is for men and women. But I felt in my heart that God wants to provoke a woman to rise up with an intercession and a violence that never seen before. Amen. In my days when women fight, they fight with two hands at the same time. They rain their hands on you. You can't even have a chance to lift up your head. It is it's raining on every corner. I'm speaking to a woman. Rise up like Micah chapter 4 verse 3 said. It said, Arise and thresh, daughters of Zion. Amen. Hallelujah. 
arise and stretch daughters of that. That means and scatter and split apart. Amen. This is a word that is using for a wild animal that grab its prey and scatter and destroy the, the prey. Just cut the prey in pieces. Amen. Stretch the prey in pieces. It says, arise, daughters of Zion. Hallelujah. Fresh daughters of Zion. I will give you horns of iron. Amen. I will give you horns of iron. It speak of strength. Amen. Those are elements of battles. It speak of strength. Amen. I will give you iron of horn. Amen. And I will give you hoofs of bronze. Hello. The hoofs, that's what the animal used to destroy his prey under his feet. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. And he goes and said, you will devote the gains. Now, when you destroy the enemy, you capture the gain and their wealth. He said you will devote the gain to the Lord and their wealth to the Lord. Amen. We are going out in the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. You heard me speak about the wealth of the wicked being laid down for the just. Yes. He said when you will capture, mm. you devote it to the Lord. There is a wealth of the enemies. There is a portion that's in the camp of the enemy that we're going to look for and gather. Amen. Hear me, brother and sister. I hate poverty. Mm. I grew up in it. I hate it with all my being, my heart. I refuse to be poor. I hate poverty. And I just really pray that you hate. The Lord spoke to me in January. He said, my people have to come in a place that they hate poverty the same way they hate sin. Mm. In other word, in other word, we repent for immorality. It is time we repent also for poverty. Amen. If this does not enter your heart, you're not catching me. Mm. We need to repent for have accommodated poverty in our churches, in our families, and we think it's a form of humility and religious spirituality. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We refuse that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to prepare you a little bit and we pray. And Sunday we're going to bring it and shoot it to another level. Watch me, brothers and sisters. There's what we call a generational poverty. This one, you don't even need the Holy Spirit to help you. You can sit down and take an inventory of your family life, starting with you, your dad, your mom, you know, people in your family line. You can tell. You can tell. If you ever heard me giving stories where I grew up, you know this guy is from a poor family. Listen, it is the truth. In that perspective. Or you grow up in a poor environment. <laughs> you take inventory and you can tell. And some of going, yeah, you know, we are not poor because at least we eat. You know, poverty is to work for food. That's poverty. <laughs> when you work for food and shelter, you, are, you, are not, you have not tapped yet in kingdom wealth. I have to say that again. We need to repent for poverty because poverty is not just paying food. If you work for food, you are still in the confine and dimension of poverty. So I'm trying to stretch these things so some of you don't feel like, yeah, you know, yeah, we're eating some corned beef. No, no. Listen, if you are working for food today, as I speak to you, this one is for you. You are still in the confine and dimension of poverty. I feel like I can take a break and think about this. I will say it again, though. I said... If you are working for, don't even tell me you know I'm rich in Christ. That's not what I'm talking about. Please let's sit down and take inventory. We are mysteries that are available in the kingdom, but if you don't acquire them, they won't benefit you. So yes, you are rich in Christ and we are all rich in Christ, but our eyes need to be enlightened so we can capture those riches. It's not because they are there, we have them. We can have them by faith, but do we have them experientially? That's what I'm trying to get to. It is time that we begin to command results in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That we will start having experiences. That theologies can become now an experience, a reality. So when you say God is faithful, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When you say God is good, you have tasted of his goodness. Not just by theology or doctrinal truth, but experientially. Mm -hmm. They need to come a time in the life of a person where you have a consolation where things are not just by theory or theology. Amen. You see, we need to become living epistles. So when somebody is want to learn about wealth in the Bible, they just need to look at your life. Amen. 
and they feel like, no, I know now what it means when somebody says, God blesses, God blessed me. When somebody says, I have an inheritance that I, I, I am enjoying wealth, you they know when they look at you. So what I'm speaking is very serious. It's a very serious matter. Don't compare yourself to other people who are doing lineup to get bread. They are poor too. But even you, if you work for bread, you're still in the realm of poverty. Because we need to get in a place where we are blessed to be a blessing. Where we can secure the inheritance for two generations at least, our grandchildren. Amen. So this one, I want you to give insight to it. There's what we call generational poverty that I'm talking about. You, you look at the inventor of your family. Poverty demote. Poverty humiliate. Poverty brings shame. I tell you the truth. It keeps you dependent. You are a slave to the one who lent to you. That's what the Bible says. It said the rich rule over the poor. It didn't say the rich Christian. It said the rich. In other words, if somebody is wealthy, even though he is not a Christian, he is ruling over you. You can speak in tongue and roar like a lion. If you are broke, the guy who lent to you, he is your master. The Bible says you are his slave. So even though he doesn't speak in tongues and he's not a Christian, I'm just being truthful. Because to solve an issue, you have to recognize and take the truth at heart. Amen. So today, I come to talk to somebody just for a few minutes. That there is still a technology in God where we can rewrite our history family. Amen. We can rewrite the story of our families. Hallelujah. Amen. That's chronic poverty. Your uncle barely made it. Your life is one man to the other. All right? Now, the second dimension of poverty is called chronic poverty. This one is a stubborn one. This one, chronic poverty. You know what chronic poverty is? You are praying, believing, let's say, for $10,000. And then the miracle come. And God released the $10,000. And you were looking for this $10,000 for a specific assignment, a specific thing to do. You didn't tell any human being in the earth, right? But suddenly people begin to call you from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Ivory Coast, from uh, 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 Nicaragua. Yeah, you, you understand? They begin to call you. It's like CNN just announced it on the television. Hey, this guy just received 10000 <laughs> And then suddenly genuine need from your parents and other people begin to show up on the scene. You have no choice. The $10,000 just gone because you have chronic poverty and you need deliverance. Who announced to them that you just get the blessing? Who announced to them? Tell me. Nobody knew. <laughs> There's a spirit that's operating to be able to redirect your resources. Into some genuine place. Mama has a leg problem. She needs to pay, pay, pay medication. Is that not a genuine, noble cause? Mm -hmm. But yet, that money was not assigned for that. Yeah. Suddenly, problem begin to show up where there was not supposed to be a problem. Your money is relocated, relocated, derouted in different things. Before you realize you are praying again for another breakthrough for 10000 for this problem that you are not able to solve. Mm -hmm. I come in the name of Jesus to tell somebody, you are about to get free from that chronic poverty that is stubborn, that has robbed family from their blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This one is a serious one. Very serious. There is another dimension of poverty is called geographical poverty. Mm. You know, poverty is the mother of all hurts and wounds and problems. You can look in a the city. There are some areas in the city where it's really poor. That's where the police is always. That's where prostitution is at the hike. Mm. That's why crimes is at the hike. That's why drug is at the hike. Suicide is at the hike. Poverty is the mother of human being affliction. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. This is a serious matter. And I do not want to finish my life in just perspective and predicament. Mm. So are you. So we can redefine this thing really quickly before it gets too late and leave our children fighting the same demon we're not able to, to handle in our lifetime. So this is a very serious subject. And I would like to, to take time and reveal the demonic agenda against the church, against you. Do you understand? So we can deal with this thing properly. Here is the most dangerous poverty dimension. Mental poverty. Mental poverty. It bound you, you have no capacity to think. 
Jesus said, because the tradition of your forefathers, of your fathers, you have rendered the word of God of no effect. Mm. That's poverty in the mind. Mm. That refuse to embrace change. Mm. That does not like to learn. That does not like to expose itself to light. It likes conservatives mm. to stay the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't want to add value on themselves. That is mental poverty. They refuse mental transformation. And therefore, the same thing repeats itself over and over again. Even though they are prayerful, even though they love the Lord and they mean well. Mental poverty. Now, let me give you quickly here as we are closing. Sunday will see you there. Let me give you quickly as we are closing. Some type of dream that operate in the life of a person that are sign that poverty is at the door or you are under the yoke of poverty. There are some dreams. There are some type of dream when you begin to have those dreams, they don't look like money related. Mm. But this is the message God is allowing you to hear. And I want to give you this list of the different type of dream that give you a clue mm. that poverty is either here or is coming or is rolling somewhere. You know, I'm not here to insult you. I'm here to free you mm -hmm. and give you knowledge. Number one, when you dream and you see yourself falling from mountain tops, you know, you're on the mountain, suddenly you begin to fall. And you wake up and say, oh, I was falling. I was so scared. Before I hit the ground, I wake up. That dream, be careful. Take note of it. Number two, climbing a mountain and you never make it to the top. For whatever reason, you always wake up with the intention to go to the top, but in the dream is never fulfilled. All these, take notes. Be careful. Number three, you do all kind of job. You see yourself in the dream. Every type of job that is offered to you, you go for it. Even the hard one, the hardship. You always see yourself in dream working hard. It is hardship. It's never an easy job. It's always sweaty and dangerous. Be careful. You see in the dream you're wearing dirty clothes or clothes that have holes on it. Wretched. Be careful. Be careful. If you dream and you see you've been dragged to a court, standing there and being questioned, be careful. You dream you see you lost your wallet or you misplaced it or it's been stolen, be careful. You dream and you see they handcuff your hands. Handcuff. Somebody said, but what the handcuff have to do? The Bible says, I will bless the work of your hand. When your hand are handcuffed, you cannot walk and produce. I can give you interpretation of all, but my goal is just to throw them up to get your attention. When you dream, you see yourself borrowing. They are lending to you. We wake up, yeah, provision. No, you're borrowing. They are lending to you. You're begging. Be careful. When you dream and you have husband of the night, or wife of the night, where you sleep in the night and you're having a sexual relationship with a woman, or if it's a woman with a man and stuff like that, or you see you're pregnant in that dream giving babies, be careful. Those are the spiritual demonstration that your resources have been used somewhere else. Because mm. you have to feed those babies somehow, right? The load is increasing. When you dream and you see yourself naked, it's not always immorality. Be careful. Strip from clothes. Be careful. Be careful. When you see you dream and they are pursuing and chasing after you, be careful. Be careful. Somebody trying to get what is not theirs. When you dream and you see that your hair is being taken away, cut your hair or something, losing your hair, be careful. Somebody, it can mean a lot of things, but I'm telling you, these dreams are linked usually to poverty. That's what I'm trying to get to you. When you see that you live in an old place, really abandoned place, mm. it speaks of years of regression mm. and poverty. And some of you will dream you see yourself back in the village mm -hmm. or in the house where you grow up. Or you will dream you will see yourself in the same classroom passing an exam that you never pass. Mm. So many people. That message, those are messages to tell you mm -mm, something is going wrong here. There's a poverty. You are rewriting an exam with struggling with the same exam that you're not able to pass. And it's like you are in grade two or grade five or in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, classes that you have passed already. It has a way to just drag you back to those places. When you dream, you see yourself in prison, in a place of confinement. It speaks of restriction. You need to be careful. It is not a joyful thing. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. And I come to tell somebody, Joseph, you can no longer afford to remain in prison. Amen. Why? Because there is a place marked for you Amen. to accommodate you in the palace. Amen. You can no longer reset that. Thank you, Jesus. We can continue on this thing and not finish. All I'm trying to tell you, the reason I'm sharing this, I would like to talk on Sunday. On the, it's going to be a deliverance service. Amen. A deliverance service. Amen. I call it, oh Lord, stop the manna. It is a deliverance service of powerful services Amen. where I will express to you the conspiracy that has been raised right now by the enemy Amen. against the church. Amen. There is, you are not in the U.S. government to talk about cons conspiracy. Conspiracy is born in the spirit. It was not born in the physical. Government did not create conspiracy. Amen. It is a demonic agenda. There is a conspiracy in secret being built generation after generation, mm. hidden from the eyes of the church. And I will show you what is that demonic conspiracy and is related to wealth. Amen. And therefore, it pertains to you and your family. Mm. There is a conspiracy against you. There is a conspiracy against you and your family and the purpose of God for your life. Amen. And we have to rise up by the anointing of God and put an end to all this stuff and bring back realignment. Draw the line that the word of the Lord will rise up within us as we learn it with Sister Smartress today. Amen. That we'll be able to posture ourselves and legislate in the spirit Amen. and say enough is enough. Amen. No, enough is enough. No more poverty, geographically chronic that you inherited. No, no more. Amen. Born poor is destiny. Remaining poor is a curse. We need to put an end to it. Somebody needs to change his status. Nobody will do this for you. You need to be exposed to the word of God. Tap into the impartation, the anointing that will be available so we can break those bars and turn around and rewrite the history from our families. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hand to the man and the woman that you have brought. That woman will rise up with iron hands, Amen. with iron horns, Amen with bronze hoofs Amen. to destroy the work of the enemy Amen. and destroy the work of the devil and Amen. obscurity. Amen. Realign their families yes. and bring forth the counsel of God for prosperity. Amen. Lord, you say your cities will spread abroad because yes. of their prosperity. Yes. Your church will spread abroad because of the prosperity. Yes. Your families will spread abroad because of the prosperity. Amen. And by wisdom and understanding and light, Father God, we buy into such today Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. We just want to say it. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. Thank you. Please share testimony with us. Amen. Share the good news of the Lord with us. Amen. Share the word that I've touched you. Amen. Share the thing God is doing in your life Amen. through this ministry. Amen. She has brought you the word of the Lord Amen. through declaration. Amen. The word that keep you away from not sinning. The word that brings fulfillment to the promises of the Lord. Amen. Please share with us some of those miracles God is doing with you. Amen. We love you. We celebrate God for your life. You, and Jesus. God bless you and see you on, on Sunday. Sunday. A miracle is coming. Coming your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bye God bless God. you. God bless bye bye. You